Hey guys, um, welcome to this video when we're going to talk about user interfaces and Canvas in Unity. So user interfaces have changed a little bit recently, or recently, um, it's been three, four years now maybe, I'm getting old. Um, but they are now an independent system that's very, very uh, powerful that we're going to look at by creating a new project. And we're going to dedicate this uh, video exclusively to um, the user interface and the Canvas interactions. So while Unity is loading, let's talk a little bit about the Canvas itself. The Canvas is a special game object which holds um, all other UI elements. So we're going to see what different kinds of UI elements we can have, but the Canvas in particular needs to be the parent of all the other game objects. And we've seen what those parents are already. Um, the sort of relationship between child and parent. Um, on top of the canvas element, we also have an event system object, which allows us to interact with that canvas. So let's take a look. Let's say we want to have UI. First thing we need to create is always going to be a canvas. And actually two things are created. There's a canvas here that's being created and an event system. This event system takes care of any sort of input that the user might have. So like tapping on buttons, scrolling on text, and so on and so forth. You don't need to care that much about this event system right now. We'll look into it into other videos. For now, you need to know that if you want to be able to click on something in your canvas, you need to have an event system. So leave it there, let it be, it's having a good time. Inside our canvas, we're going to create, for now, an image. Bam. And you see how in our scene view, there's this massive white thing that appeared. And as we scroll out, this white thing becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? Like, if we look at the scale of our camera, the white thing becomes smaller. Then we have this interesting um, paradox, is that if we click on our camera, and we see the view of our main camera, we go to our game view, there's nothing. There's no white, there's no white square whatsoever. So we go to our, um, our game view, and now we actually see the white square. So that's one of the most important concepts when dealing with um, canvases and UI and Unity, is that what you see here in the scene view, which seems to be actually in sort of uh, the 3D space of the scene view, actually only exists in the 2D space of the game view. It's basically just like a transparent film or a sticker that you put on top of the camera and does not change wherever you're looking at or in whichever direction you're looking at. So now if I actually do change, if I go to the image object on the hierarchy and I change the position of the image, as I move it around, you see that it moves on my camera, right? And it moved on this big object that I, um, that I see in my scene view, even though the camera is still like way out on the bottom left. So this big white rectangle that we're seeing here is actually the resolution of our camera. And let's say we're exporting our application for, let's say, iPhone. I'm going to click on free aspect here. I'm going to change my display ratio to an iPhone 8 portrait mode. So it has this sort of vertical aspect to it. If I go to scene, now I see that this white um, square of the canvas has changed into the rectangle. So it matches the target screen of our app. Okay, I'm going to go back to 16 by 10, and now it has, on the scene mode, it has 16 by 10. So even though it looks like they belong to the scene view, these objects that are inside this canvas do not at all actually belong on it. We only see them once we're inside the game view. Okay. So there's one way to do this, and that is called screen space. Canvases can exist in screen space. It's going to be the default one for sort of like the basic UI in which the interface is not directly connected to the, the world that you're presenting behind the interface. But if you want the interface to actually be connected to the world, we need to uh, create it within a 3D world. To see that, we're going to start by mimicking our 3D world very basically by just creating a single cube. So I go to my camera, I double click on it so I get close to it, 
I create the cube. The cube is rendered right in front of the camera. I check that I can see it in the game view. Yep, here's my cube. And so if I click play and I start moving the camera on the x-axis, it's actually moving, tilting to the side, and so it looks like the cube is moving away. But the white image, the white on my canvas, is not moving at all because it's tied specifically to my camera. Let's see how we could create another image, another UI image, um, which would live in the same world, so to speak, as the cube. To do that, we're going to create a new canvas. I'm going to go to Game Object, UI, Canvas. I'm going to call this like Canvas 3D, so that we keep track of which one is which. And inside, I'm going to put UI, Image. So now we have those two images, and by default, our canvas treaty is going to exist on the screen space. The render mode is screen space. And we have basically those two canvases overlapping each other. And I'm going to change the canvas 3D to world space. World space means that now it exists within um, the 3D world. And because it's in world space, it exists within the world of the camera as well. So I'm going to specify what is the camera that I'm going to need to trigger events. That's my main camera. Drag it, I'm going to drag and drop it into the event camera. And we go back to the game and we see that the, the original like white image that we saw, if we put it in screen space, it appears in the middle. If we put it in world space, it goes away. Why does it go away? Because now it's literally this massive, massive, massive canvas. And so it's way out of the field of view of the, cam of the camera. So I'm going to click on the Rect tool. And this tool is the tool that we use to manipulate canvases and flat objects. And I'm going to make it a lot smaller. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot smaller. And how big is my camera? OK, we're getting a little bit closer. Um, still smaller than the image itself inside should be at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Still not there. Maybe I need to move it in the depth. I'm going to move the whole canvas, not just the image, a little bit further. How does it look? Yeah. And so now we see that this big white square here is our image, this time in 3D space. I can rotate it. And it rotates as well. If I click play, and I move my main camera on the x-axis, sort of pan, and the white image moves as well. It moves at a different uh, speed as the cube because it might be some uh, perspective playing, it might still be like a huge image, but it exists in the 3D world and the camera renders it as if it existed in the 3D world. So what's the point of having it in a 3D world if um, we could just create like a regular image like we did uh, before? The point is that we can still interact with those items or with those elements of the canvas um, even if they're in 2D or in 3D. Particularly, some of those um, interactions are going to be buttons. Let's look at how a button would look like. In my canvas 3D, I'm going to add a UI element. I'm going to add a button inside and let's just click play and see if it works. And you see I can click this without, uh, without having to code anything at all. Already the button is changing color. If I click the cube, nothing actually happens. And that's because, again, we have this event system here and because those items are within a particular um, canvas. I'm going to delete the image for here. And I'm going to make this scale 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Can we bring it a little bit closer, maybe? Oops. Bring the whole canvas closer. And down. Okay, and 
for now, I'm going to move the other image. I'm going to position it at. I'm going to move the position so that it goes out of the way. And now let's look into actual event systems. So we've seen that canvas elements um, hold all other UI elements. They can be in screen space, world space. Screen space is basically like on top of the camera, or world space as a regular 3D object. Before we move into rec transforms, let's look at how we do easy interaction with UI elements. And all we're going to do is just have a button that, for now, makes the cube disappear. So I'm going to click on the button, and the button has a button component. And this button component at the bottom has a list of on-click events. And basically, this is a list of all the things that should happen whenever the button is being clicked. And if we click plus to add a new object to the list, if we want a new thing to happen, as usual with Unity, we have to deal with uh, game object components and attributes. So first, we need to say, what is the game object we want to affect? If we want the cube to disappear, then we're going to drag the cube into this thing. And then what do we want to do with the cube? And there are a bunch of like ready-made things or pre-built things that we can do with the cube. One of them, we can go at, let's say, the mesh render, which is the component of the cube that makes it appear. And there is a Boolean, so a true or false value called enabled. So if we disable this, the cube's going to disappear. And this, the checkbox at the bottom, is what the value should be once we click it. So if we play our app now, we click on the button, what the value should be of the mesh render of the cube should be false. And the cube disappears. But this is kind of like a, a, a simple interaction, as you see. And so if I click again, I cannot make the, the button come back, the, the cube come back. And for this, we need to write a script. So to do that, we're going to create an empty object. We're going to call it App Manager, and our script is going to be UI Manager. Once it's there, we need to create a function which is going to do whatever it is that we want to do with the cube, right? So our function is going to be void toggle cube. And so what it's going to do first is, first it's going to get a reference to the cube, right? Like we're going to say public game object cube. And you remember that when we do something public, the field appears here. We're just going to drag our cube here. So now we know which cube we're talking about. And then in the toggle cube function, basically we want to say, well, is the cube enabled? If so, does it, if the render of the cube is enabled, disable it. If it's disabled, enable it. So if cube.getComponent, the name of the component is mesh render, dot enabled equals 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 true then we say that component mesh render should be set to false on the other hand if it's not true then we want to set it to true copy this, and I'm going to set this here to true. And it's going to reload. And now, if we click, if we press play, we click our button, it disappears, but it doesn't come back. 
because we didn't change the behavior of our button. So we need to go to the button and we need to say, well, instead of like actually dealing with the cube and dealing with the, the built-in functions of the mesh render, we have another object which has a component, which has a function that we want to execute. The function we want to execute is toggle cube. So to do that, we need to look at the UI manager component, which is attached to the app manager. Manager, there's a typo. To the app manager. So first, I'm going to drag the app manager into the object. Then I'm going to look for the component. And our component, in this case, is UI manager. And then I'm going to look for the function. And so I look at name, run dead mode, blah, blah, blah. And I don't see the one that's called toggle cube. And, and the reason because of, uh, of that is because we want to be able to say, um, to show it in the editor, and therefore we need to add the public keyword. So it's not void toggle cube, it's public void toggle cube. If we go back to the editor now, you can see in the drop down menu that we want to go to the UI manager, and at the bottom we see toggle cube. And so every time that we click on the button, it's going to go to the app manager object, game object, it's going to go to the UI manager script and it's going to execute the toggle cube, the toggle cube function. Let's see how this looks. It turns it on and off. Great. And as a finishing touch, we might want to change the name button. We might want to change it into like switch. So we're going to go into the text object and side button. We're going to go into the text component. We're going to call it like cube switcher. I will let you guys explore all of those different formatting options for text, all the different formatting options for images, for buttons. They're pretty straightforward and pretty fun to play with. The last thing that I want to touch upon now is um, this component, the top one, the rec transform. So other quote unquote 3D traditional um, game objects, they have a normal transform. Canvas elements have a rec transform. And they have a rec transform because by default, as we've seen there in screen space, they deal with um, the actual display, the hardware display of the screen in which we're going to view the app. And as some of you might know or have experience, devices come in different sizes, different resolutions, different everything, and it's a nightmare if you're going to export for a particular um, desktop or laptop or even worse for um, Android phones, uh, what exactly is the size that you're going to look at. And so to deal with this, if we look at the game view, we have different ways that we can set up our, um, our viewport. We can say, I want this to look at the, as an old iPhone, landscape mode of the old iPhone, new iPhone, and so on. But you see, as I start switching between those different kind of layouts, um, I lose this other white image that I had at the beginning. That's at the bottom left. That's because we said that we want this image to be at the bottom left, so a position x of minus 600, position y of minus 350, and so it kind of disappears. And so what um, rec transforms are good at, first of all, is setting anchor points. So now we see that this image, if we click on this uh, symbol here, the image is based on the center of the image, um, on the center of the viewport, of the, of the actual camera view. If we click on the bottom left here and we say we want the origin point to be at the bottom left, then now the zero, 0 is at the bottom left, and so the image is going to change position based on the bottom left. If I change my layout now to iPhone 8, the bottom left moves, and the image moves relatively to the bottom left. Similarly, if I have, um, say, a 16 by 9 screen, a 16 by 10 screen, and I want to have another image, or maybe a text at the top, I'm going to add a UI Element. I'm going to add a text here. It's a tiny text, but I'm going to make it a lot bigger so we cover a lot. And if I go to my scene, I see that my new text is just like a tiny little thing. And I want it to be at the top and fill in the complete top. Let's say some sort of menu, for instance. So what I'm going to say is that I'm going to say first 
the anchor point should be at the top. And now the anchor point is at the top, so my, my pause y instead of being 0 is now minus 503. I set it to 0, and now the new text is at the very top. But so I need to do a little bit of math, right? Because if the height of the text is 30, I want the pause y to actually be minus 30, or minus 15 to be precise. And now I also want the, the text to be, okay, let's say actually, i put it at 60 to make it a little bit bigger. Plus y is going to be minus 30. And we're going to increase the font size. It's a little bit more readable. And we're going to use the rec tool to sort of like move it a little bit further like this, right? But if I move it manually, if my screen size changes, it might cut off some part of the text. What I want is that I want it to stretch and fit from one side to the other. So to do that, I go here and I go, I press the option key um, and I set the position so that it stretches from one side to the other. And now, however big it becomes, this is always going to be from one side to the other of the same um, screen, of different screens, whether it's 16 by 9 whether it's 3 by 2 whether it's iPhone landscape, always going to have two lines of text at the top. So if you're going to export for different uh, screen sizes, if you want to make sure that like, if you're sending your app to a friend on their um, computer screens, they might have a different resolution and so on, it's very important to learn about the, the rec transform, and it can make your life a lot, a lot easier. So this concludes the overview of um, the user interface. We've seen that event systems allow for very easy interaction. It's a matter of having a button and then adding on-click events on the button by looking into what is the function we want to create, which component is that function attached to, and finally, which game object is that component attached to. We've seen that reg transforms are a way to position UIs very easily with different anchor points, different stretching, stretchings. And then finally, the canvas element is the special game object for holding all other UI elements. And the most important part of this video is understanding the difference between screen space and world space. It's a little complicated to wrap your hand about or to wrap your hand around at the beginning, but once you kind of get it, it makes sense and it allows us to use non-diegetic and diegetic interfaces sort of seamlessly. And this is the end of our user interface and canvas video.